So, I called you all here to talk about what I've discovered. Okay, Anne. <laughs> I forgot that that's how we ended off last time. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Arcadia Fallen. Last time, we broke into Goldner's and stole back the artifact, uh, but it's broken. And then we made an escape because they were chasing after us. And now, apparently, Anne is going to tell us what she discovered about that. So yeah, we're starting chapter three of the game today. I looked into it. There are seven chapters in this game. So we're making progress. Also, I wanted to point something out. My character, you know what? I'll, just, I'll wait until she gets on screen before I point this out. Let's continue. What, what have you discovered, Anne? After your turn from your successful heist, you decide to lay low for a bit to recover and go through the evidence you've uncovered. When Anne eventually calls a meeting, you enter her lab to find the place plastered with notes and drawings. The mage is holding a cup of strong-smelling coffee, and her voice seems a tad more on the shrill side than usual. So... I have been examining this map we found at Golder's Mansion, and I'm confident in my initial... In <laughs> already off to a great start. Initial theory that the underground of the mine is, in fact, a giant seal keeping these demons trapped. The positive news is that the seal is so massive that the damage is only minimal, which is why we've only seen a few demons leak out into the town. Oh, really? I think we've encountered, what, four of these things so far? I wouldn't call that minimal. <sighs> Boy, do I have bad news for you then. The massive scale of the seal suggests that there are many, many more demons lying in wait on the other side, ready to be let loose. Oh, awesome. <sighs> Victoria shifts her, sta her stance slightly, looking uncomfortable. I just don't understand. I never remember what my voice for him is. <laughs> I really don't. When I told Goldner that the mining was disrupting the seal, he refused to believe me, but it turns out that he had this map proving it all along. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people are able to bend their own reality to pretend they are not doing anything wrong. He probably thinks this is all some big mage conspiracy. He was trying to get the knights to come and investigate. <sighs> they won't come. <sighs> What? <sighs> Alethea and the Paragon himself are determined to keep this under wraps. More knights would complicate this. I can't believe this. <laughs> He's so upset. I've never seen you this angry before, Caden. They can't just turn a blind eye to what's happening here and expect it to go away. They're not. They're waiting for us to fix it for them. How does this... But why take this risk? What are they afraid of? About that. I don't know, but I intend to find out. Her tone makes everyone pause. Not even Michael dares to comment. And he loves to comment. That's for me to figure out. Anne, please continue. That's not all. So, yeah, getting back on topic. Caden's idea of fixing the broken part of the seal still seems like our, best, our safest bet. But knowing what we no do know now about the sheer scale of this seal, it's clear that he never had the power needed to repair it. I mean, the entire valley is all just part of this huge spell. A single dragon sword isn't going to cut it. Hmm? What are you saying? <sighs> I'm saying you're pretty lucky that Miner interrupted you when you died. When you he did. <laughs> when he did! Not when you died, you're still alive. Because the ritual would never have worked in the first place. Most likely, the sword would have had its power sucked out completely, and the spell would have taken your life force with it. Oh, you would have died. Before doing Alith Alith Alitheros... <laughs> knows what to the surrounding area. Instead, it rebounded and drew it missing drew its missing energy from another power source. Basically sucking it through the roots like a straw. Oh. The forest. I don't understand. What are you talking about? It's crazy how we have not been on screen yet. That's very rare. I see. A big part of the woods had its life force drained from it all of a sudden. Oh, that's right. Seems like it was caused by your ritual. Oh! Wait, what? So that's what happened. One mystery down. That's awful. So that's what happened. That's horrible. Okay. So. Look look at this character. Remember, I was like, I want to make it look as much like me as I can, like way back in the first episode. She's got green eyes. I have brown eyes. The outfit, I would have picked different colors. But I thought that like this is all I could do. This was like the most customization it had. So my friend pointed out to me something. Look at the screen. You see under colors, like how they all match up with the colors 
of like the eyes and the outfit and everything. Yeah, so it turns out I could have like changed the color of my outfit and my eyes. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. The colors line up enough. I thought that was all for hair because it says like the, it's got like the hairstyle and then right under it is the color. And I thought that was all for hair. So I just, just like, oh, that's brown. And I left it that. Why would I click on the others? I don't know. I didn't think that was clear, but she figured it out. So maybe I'm just an idiot. <sighs> Kaden gets up and abruptly storms out, out of the shop. <laughs> hey, wait, you can't just... Victoria gets up to follow, but Michael puts her hand on her shoulder, halting her. <sighs> let him go. He needs a moment to let that one settle. Even in this state, he's no fool. He won't get caught again. <sighs> Victoria shrugs off his hand, but stays put for now. Look... You should probably go talk with him later, Morgan. You are the main character. Eh, you're right. Though for now, we really should figure out what to do. About that. Right. And what would you suggest? Is there a way to fix a seal this big? <sighs> it's not going to be easy. I still need to study the, se the seal in more detail. I'm certain one of one thing, though. Whatever ritual we might end up using, it's going to need power. Like, a lot of it. And that's where our dear alchemist friend comes in. Me? What? Me? What can I do? So... I mentioned to you earlier that your spirit locket is quite special. The power it possesses grows stronger every time you seal away another demon, but you haven't yet accessed that power, and I'm starting to understand why. It's missing something, a few key components to connect the mechanism. It's quite odd, actually. It's almost like they used... It's almost like they used to be there, but have since been removed. I could take a closer look and build the missing piece, b the missing pieces, but then we would still need <sighs> more demons. <laughs> exactly. The main issue is a simple lack of power. We need more demons to fuel the spell needed for this. Got it. How many? Let me take a look. Morgan already captured four demons. One more of the same size as the others might do the trick, though I could make a more precise calculation for you. So that's how it is. That won't be needed. We know what we have to do. Victoria's sharp eyes zero one in on you and you swallow. Hi. I'm not gonna get a say in this, right? It's clear what has to be done. I have a bad feeling. This is it. It's clear what must be done not to them. Not bad. What, be, what must be done then? I'm glad you see it that way. This is the plan. The hunt begins in the morning. You better rest up and prepare. Actually... I would also like a bit of your time soon. There's still much to learn about your locket, and I'm eager to get started. <laughs> so much for getting some rest. It's right back into the fire for us. The meeting concludes, and everyone walks off to do their separate things. There's no sign of Caden. Hear me out. I'm kind of worried. I think we should go look for him, Morgan. I agree. He shouldn't be out there alone. I'm worried. Let's go. Let's go find him. Come on. The forest is ominously quiet at night, and Mime is walking very close to you as you step between the, the dead trees. Hey, found him. Eventually, you spot the familiar glow of Caden's markings. He's standing by one of the dead trees, deep in thought. <sighs> He's angry. Ah. Then he turns around and punches the trunk, and it cracks, leaving a deep dent in the dry wood. <laughs> okay. Maybe you should be the one talking to him. Yes, one person is probably best. Uh, I'll just be standing over here. Thanks a lot, Mime. Whatever protest you had doesn't matter because Mime's already gone. Nothing to do but approach him on your own. Walk up to him carefully. So. Hey there, Caden. Are you alright? Kin whips around to face you, visibly startled. Uh -huh. Morgan, what are you doing? Sorry, I didn't mean for you to see that. What are you even doing out here alone? It isn't safe. I could say the same to you, Bubby. Bubby? Buddy. <laughs> Look who's talking. Hey, that's what I said. I handle myself. I was worried. About that. Look who's talking. The last I checked, I wasn't the one out with, with, one with a track record of being caught off guard when going off on their own. <sighs> that's a fair point. So I take it you came all the way back out here to check up on me? I see. You don't have to do that. I don't want to burden you with my worries. No, no romance. You're my friend. We're a team. We need you. About that. You're our friend, Caden. 
we're in this together, so of course I wouldn't just leave you to deal with whatever this is on your own. Huh? That's... I didn't expect that. Thank you, my friend. So... Why don't you try explaining to me what's going on? <laughs> okay, I was like, I could have swore I hit the advance button, but turns out I didn't. He looks so very pained. The elders at home always tell me I act too rashly. That I am too emotional when making decisions. They were right. Look at this mess. The forest was ruined because... I wanted to play at being the hero. You were just trying to help, though. No one could have predicted things turning out the way they did. But it was predicted. Foretold, even. And I... I am sorry, friend. But I haven't been honest with you. I wasn't sent by my people to solve this. In fact, they forbade me from going. Mm. Predicting that something like this would happen. And yet, I went anyway. You're doing what you thought you had to do, buddy. I'm not gonna get mad at him. No! I'm not, I'm not gonna get mad at him. Can't fault you for not trusting us. I mean, given what you went through with Goldner, I can hardly blame you for not trusting us at first. You are way too forgiving. I deceived you in order to hide my mistakes. I'm not mad. I'm really not. But even that failed miserably. The sword is broken. There's no hiding anymore. I never had the right to wield that blade. I took it. Thinking the end result would be worth breaking a few rules for. I was arrogant. And this forest paid the price for my foolishness. I cannot return to my people in such disgrace. I honestly don't know what to do from here. You help us. And then you can return to your people and be like, I did it. Oh, your choice will impact Caden's path going forward. Okay, okay. You move forward and fix your mistakes. Stop caring about what other people think and move forward on your own. Hmm. I mean, I feel like redemption is kind of like what I was saying before. I was like, okay, you help us and then you can, you know, do it. Like return and be like, I did it. You know? You can't just keep wallowing in your own self-pity. You made a mistake. Well, so does everyone. But if you want the people at home to forgive you, then you gotta work for it. Be someone they can be proud of. If you want them to accept you. You... You are right. Of course you are. I cannot give up now. They say rock bottom is a sturdy foundation. Thank you for making me see that all is not yet lost. No problem, bud. Keep calling you buddy, I don't know why. Except for that time I called you bubby. Caden smiles and places a hand on the wound wounded tree trunk. I will fix this mistake, one step at a time. I will right these wrongs. Thank you, my friend. I'm happy to help. I'm not gonna be annoyed. I'm not gonna be mean to him. I'm, not, I'm really not mad about that lie. I'm really not. Kin grins, then shifts to look out into the dark forest. Anyway, I think we should head back now. Mime has been hiding behind that tree for a while now. It must be uncomfortable. <laughs> you knew you were here the whole time, Mime. Wait, you knew I was there? Your appearance isn't exactly nondescript, is it? Look who's talking. The three of you return to the shop to rest. You are rather expressive compared to the other Outlanders I've met, Caden. You've dealt with my people before? The Hunters sometimes did business with the Nightwalkers. I've never spent much time with them myself, but even from afar, you get the impression that they're a stoic group. <laughs> to put it mildly... What was that? Nothing. Uh, my, what 
Interesting topsider architecture. Ah, yes. I'll just go take a look at that. What in the world? Smooth, Caden. Smooth. Okay, I can only go home or the flower shop. Guess we're going to the flower shop first. You approach Anne, who's looking deep in thought, poking away at the broken sword while Caden watches over her nervously. Please tell me you are being careful with it. Some of those tools look rather sharp. I am being as careful as one can be with an audience breathing down their neck. Sorry, but can you really blame me? You are handling my people's heritage like it is a piece of scrap metal. Right now, that's all it's good for, isn't it? I'm trying to salvage what I can, but unless you give me the room to work and fix it, the sword will stay broken and useless. Things can have a value even if they are broken, you know? No, they can't. <laughs> okay, um... Please don't fight. We're all on the, we're all on the same side here. Oh, Lethra's mercy. Well, you say that, yet the Outlander keeps breathing down my neck as though I will single-handedly dismantle his civilization. <sighs> Fine, I'll try to give you more space. Morgan, won't you keep an eye on her and make sure she doesn't go overboard with those tools of hers? About that... I'm sure Anne will be careful, won't you? You shoot the mage a look and she sighs, pinching the bridge of her nose with her gloved hands. <sighs> yes, yes, I promise. Now let's get down to business. Since you're here, I might as well go through all of what I've discovered so far. Tell me! Okay. Sure, tell me about it. <sighs> oh no. My pleasure. So Caden's definitely not lying when he says that when he's saying this is a powerful magic artifact. The material used is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's almost as if it's alive, pulsing with tremendous power. This be the power source for your, your research. Can we use it to seal the rift? I wonder. Does that mean we can use it to repair the rift and the seal? So. I'm fairly sure, though I must admit I'm loath to use it. This is not lethal magic. That much is certain. How does this... I honestly do not understand the human politics surrounding magic. I've studied the map of the mines we found in the mansion, and I'm confident that my initial theory holds true. The seal we are trying to fix is much larger than any of us could have predicted. The sword itself, despite its power, won't, wasn't enough to fix it. So even if I manage to fix the sword, it still won't, wouldn't be enough to solve the problem. I'm sensing a butt here. There has to be a way. So this is another dead end? Hmm? By your tone of voice, I'm sensing you've found another way. I may have found a way to solve this issue, but our fussy outlander friend is not going to like it. Uh-oh, what is it? What? The sword in itself is not powerful enough, but if we were to combine it with the spirit locket and tap into the power of the demons you have sealed away, maybe even add a few more, I think that might be just enough. I'd have to destroy the remains of the sword to repurpose it into a suitable component to fix it to fit in the locket. And I'm fairly sure I won't be able to, how should I say this, put it back the way it was when we're done. You're going to destroy it? Absolutely not. No way. You're right, he isn't happy. I told you you weren't going to like it. Look, I do not care anyway. The less I work on this thing, the better, honestly. We could just use more demon spirits instead of relying on the sword. We'd have to capture those demons, of course, and make sure our, our, our alchemist isn't killed in the process. Caden looks away in silence. The sword would put us ahead, and I was under the impression we were under a strict time schedule, so... What do you think? Caden sighs and looks to you. Ugh, okay, Caden's path again. You should use the sword, I can't make that decision for you. I feel like I can't make that decision for him. About that. The sword is yours, Caden. I can't possibly begin to understand what it means to you or your people. The decision is yours to make. <sighs> hmm. Anne looks away. Caden seems startled by your answer. Why would you? I'm surprised you could trust me with such a decision. Anne does make a valid point. If it will stop this unspeakable evil, evil from spreading, I suppose the sword does serve a better purpose in her hands. 
Just please, allow me to con continue witnessing the process. <sighs> well, fine, as long as you don't get in my way. Actually, this might work out brilliantly. I can't reach half of the stuff back here, because Quinn stacked it so high. But you, my tall friend, have been just promoted to lab assistant. Or, what? <laughs> have fun! <laughs> hey! I, I gotta pick it. That's what I just said. <laughs> well, that's my cue to get out of here before assistant is promoted to guinea pig. Have fun, Caden. What? Oh, wait, don't leave me with... <laughs> You can start by fetching me the vials from the top shelf. Careful, it will burn off your skin if it gets on you. Mercy. To hide behind a smile. It's such an odd topsider phrase. I never quite understood it. But I think I might get it now. Um, pardon? There are those among my people who wish to hide the glow of their markings, not to stay hidden but to hide certain emotions they might not want others to see. Hiding your light takes years of practice. So, some instead burn brighter, latching onto one specific emotion and using that light to obfuscate whatever might really be there. To hide behind a smile. It's interesting to know topsiders do the same thing. I feel... Oddly attacked right now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, are you referring to Michael there? Okay. That, or we're just at the flower shop. Um, I guess the market. We're getting a lot of Caden time today. You went to talk to Caden, but you can't find him at Anne's, and but you can't find him at Anne's, and he isn't at the at the shop either. It's getting dark, so you search the town for him. The town square is empty, so you sigh and continue on. You don't get that far before two guys walk up to you, intimidating sneers on their faces. Hey, oh, you! NPCs. Well, but is it the alchemist? <sighs> you've got some gall, show yourself out here after all the trouble you've caused. Breaking and entering at the boss's estate? Oh, so you know that was me? Stealing from us workers? You'll pay for that! We're not getting paid this month thanks to your little stunt. Where did you hear this? I haven't stole anything. Why would I do that? I'm gonna play dumb. Actually... Take a moment and think. Why would I steal anything from you? <sighs> Everyone needs coin. Everyone knows you and that boss had a row because he is working to put you magic folk back in your place. Steal the worker's salary as well, even for your kind. So we think it's only fair you get your get to share some of our pain. They close in on you. I'm running. You turn on your heel and run. Get away from me! Caden, save me! You're fast, much lighter than the two burly mine workers. But unlike them, you spend most of your days inside a shop, so your stamina isn't all that great. Damn it! You cry out when a big hand clamps down on the back of your shirt, and you feel yourself getting lifted off the ground, like you weigh nothing. The men's laughter ringing it in your ears. <laughs> Look at this scrawny thing! Thought you could outrun us, huh? <laughs> no it's time for us to have some fun! Caden, help! You instinctively curl up, waiting for the strike. But when the blow lands, it isn't on you. Ah! <laughs> uh, what the hell? You let out a yell when you suddenly fall, landing in an ungraceful heap on the street, wincing. The goons are laying in the dirt around you, out cold. Oh yeah, get Caden! Thank you, buddy. Above them stands a large shape, hard to make out in the dark. Hard to make out in the dark. Your vision is still swimming. I just realized I called him buddy again. Why do I keep calling you buddy? But you feel them help you upright. Cold hands looking you Talk over. Talk to me. How are you feeling? You blink in surprise, your vision swimming into focus on a familiar but glowless face. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Caden, thank you. You really saved me there. Caden's face is devoid of any emotion. <sighs> There's something off about him. <laughs> He's not glowing. The glow from his markings is dim to the point of not being there, and his voice is dull, like he isn't quite there either. Look. It isn't safe here. Let's go back to the shop. You don't argue with him as he guides you back down the street. He 
He doesn't speak another word the entire walk. He leads you back to the safety of the shop. It's quiet. Everyone's already retired for the night. <laughs> as soon as you are inside, and the door behind you is safely closed, Caden lets out a relieved sigh and you watch. Stunned as the color slowly bleeds back into his skin. Oh. Maybe it takes like a lot of energy to like hide that. That's why he was off. He winces as if it was painful. You okay? Are you okay? Are you alright, Caden? <sighs> I will be in a moment. Sorry for worrying you. You weren't meant to see Look. this. I don't use my training as a night walker often. However, you were in danger, and I wouldn't have been much I wouldn't have been much help to you if they noticed me. Bunch of questions? Okay. Tell me about What's a night walker? Well. They are a special group of warriors trained to protect the mountains from danger. They tend to do that by staying hidden and gathering information. They get their name because one of their key skills is to be able to hide the glow of their inner light. For an... How do you say that? Ijoma? That is a rather unsettling skill to possess. Our understanding of emotion is tied to the glow just as much as facial expressions or tone of voice. In order to turn off the light, you need to feel nothing. So... And you can do that. You're a night walker. <sighs> I never completed my training, but I can make my glow disappear for a time. Not that I would ever do so willingly. Once you are in that state, it is like a void. And in order to get your glow back, you must reconnect with your emotions. But if you spend your days in the dark for too long, one can forget the things that make you feel. Well, it's a good thing we only had to do it for a few minutes there. It is not sadness, not anger, just an absence of emotion. And it is a very frustrating thing to not be able to remember what made you happy, what made you sad. I've been in that place. It took everything in me to return. That's spooky. That would make a great character in an Atome game, though. Like, a character that, like, is that, and they can't remember what makes them happy or anything, and then you help bring out the emotions in them. That's my favorite trope, honestly. Like, so many of my favorite Atome characters, it's like, they're the type where it's like, they're in some sort of, like, system that makes them forget their emotions, and then you bring the emotions back. So, you know, like a Shiraishi in Call of Palace, a San German in Code Realize, um, not really an institution, but Jubin from Mystic Messenger. He, he just kind of sealed away his own emotions. And once I did, I quit my training. I was too frightened to go back to that place. What were you doing outside? What do you mean? It's dangerous with Goldner's men wandering around. Really? I should be the one asking you that. I at least have some means to defend myself, but you... What would you even have done if I had not shown up when I did? Probably died. That's what I did the last time. I'll be more careful. About that. You're right, Caden. I'm sorry, I'll be more careful in the future. Well... I'm just grateful you didn't get hurt. I've been observing the streets at night for a while now to keep track of Goldner's men. I want to find some way to be useful to our cause, now that the sword is broken together with our original with our with our original plan. So far, I've learned nothing useful. So... Does Victoria know about you sneaking around in town at night? <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. I'll take that as a no, then. No more questions. You remain silent and Caden sighs, running a hand through his hair. Look. I know these nightly activities are risky, but I couldn't just stay here and do nothing. Now that Anne has taken the sword, the only useful thing I'm capable of is scouting in the dark, but... It appears I can't even do that much. A true Nightwalker would have been more useful, but I am not that. <laughs> I think we're all pretty useless. You're not useless. About that. You've already done great things for us, Caden. I would hardly call you useless. In fact, I'm very grateful to have you here helping us. You're our friend. I wouldn't change you for the world. Huh? Morgan? <laughs> I like that, like, sprite of his where he's like, huh? He's like all confused, his eyes are wide. Huh. 
Thank you. I needed that. I might have lost my head a little there. Sorry. It's late. We should get some rest and continue our mission tomorrow with fresh minds. I'll be here if you need me. Good night, Morgan. The two of you part ways to go rest. So, you brought the alchemist back to life and somehow linked your souls together in the process? That's what happened. How? Mostly by accident, really. I was trying to help and it just sorta happened. Fascinating. If I wasn't preoccupied with my current project, then looking into this spirit resurrection could be another viable option. I'm certain plenty of high-ranking nobles would be interested in procuring such research. However, I suppose the side effects might be too much, even for them. Side effects? Oh, wait, you're talking about me? Gotcha. <laughs> so, this the little Anne picture was not there the first time we went to the flower shop. So is there different stuff there now? Getting a lot of these two, Anne and Caden, today. Anne's workshop is starting startlingly quiet when you return. You find the mage not busily wielding together new materials, but instead leaning against her desk, reading what appears to be a letter. So... Hey, Anne. Did something happen? Huh? Huh? Oh, hello, Morgan. No, work is progressing as planned. I just received a message, that's all. It's a letter from my brother, informing me that one of my father's associates has gotten a permit for a court mage, and insinuates quite heavily that I should give up my foolish endeavor and come settle down. <sighs> uh, don't have a supportive family, huh? She folds up the letter and throws it on the table dismissively. She's an idiot if he thinks I'd settle for a life as a pathetic court jester. But you've got to admire his tenacity. I didn't think his couriers would be able to find me all the way out here. What do you mean? What do you mean by court jester? So... You know how towns have to qualify in some way to be allowed to have a mage move in? Well, some noble families got tired of their offspring ending up all over the Empire, so they rigged the rules so that big estates or courts could qualify as, town as a town too. So mage children from noble houses go to the academy to learn pretty illusion magic, and then return home to live off, their off of their family's wealth as entertainers. Ugh. Why would I ever want that for myself? Spending the rest of my life humoring a bunch of corrupt nobles. What a joke. Tell me about... Your father's associate? When you name it like that, it sounds rather sketchy. Uh -huh. Oh, that's because it is. I love my father dearly, but I'm not a fan of how he uses our family's power to bend the rules at to his will. Huh? You have a brother? Actually... I have two, actually. Older brothers, both of them. We don't get to see each other much, for obvious reasons, but Marcus likes to write to keep me up to date on the Hoffman family's latest shenanigans. Hmm? What about your parents? Don't they write to you as well? So... My father is too busy playing politics to spend much time on family matters. He does send the occasional extravagant gift as a way to mend the tear. She chuckles and taps at the gemstone brooch holding her tie together. My mother and I have a complex relationship. We don't talk much. Tell me about... <laughs> I just keep getting more and more questions for you. Your father is a politician? It is his passion. The Hoffman family has always held high standing among the elites of Erodos, but my father's ideals have been shaping the entire region for a generation now. Erodos has a history of being rather conservative in its views on magic. My father changed that, tipping the scale towards a more open approach. He has done amazing work, so I excuse him for being a rather absent parent in my life. He would never have been happy if he'd had to put that part of his life behind him. Oh. Still, that must have been quite hard for you, growing up without him. Mm. It was, in more ways than you know. I wonder... What are your brothers like? So... Orion is the eldest. He's been following my father's footsteps into politics, but I honestly don't think it suits him. He's too, he's too gentle for that type of work. It doesn't matter, though, since he's the heir and is going to be set for life no matter how his political career goes. He got married last spring. I have never met his wife, but Marcus writes that she's sweet, so I'm happy for him. Uh -huh. 
Marcus is different. Easily excitable, but with the attention span of a small fish. My father is a patient man, but even he's growing tired of Marcus, never sticking with anything for more than a day. <sighs> the one thing that does seem to keep his interest, though, is keeping in touch with me, which I appreciate. Uh, your family's wealth. Really? Your family is wealthy? <laughs> My excessively long name didn't give that away. I forget the rest of your name, honestly. The Hoffman family is one of the oldest noble lines in Erodos. It is of no use to me, however. I escaped that circus when my mage abilities were discovered, much to my family's chagrin. About that... You should do what you love, no matter what your family might think. <laughs> my thoughts exactly. My family doesn't understand my dream, or why I work so hard to reach it. They are simply projecting their own hopes and wishes onto me. It doesn't make them bad people, but it means I have to contend with walking this path alone. At least until I succeed, then hopefully they'll realize that this is what makes me happy. Oh, fascinating. It's funny. She turns to you. No way, I think you understand me better than they do. We might not see eye to eye on some things, but you have at least experienced the same as I have, as I have chosen to support, and have chosen to support me even if you don't agree. That means a lot to me. <laughs> Whatever. Just gonna be a total bitch. I'm glad. I'm glad that's how you feel, Anne. I want to be your friend. Friend, huh? She tastes the word like it's almost foreign in her mouth. I've never had a whole bunch of those, but for you, I think I can make an exception. So come on now, friend of mine. I need an assistant for some heavy lifting, and I think you've just volunteered. Oh, joy. Uh, sure. <laughs> I can do that, no problem. Probably. You spend the next hour helping her move stuff around the workshop. So you lied to us. I'm sorry. Ah, you found out. For the deception. I did not have my people's blessing to come here. Yes, it's fine. I'm not mad. But everything else that I have told you about the seal and the artifact has been the truth. Why would the Outlanders want to keep this a secret? We do not meddle in the world, Topside. Our elders believe the mountains will keep us safe from the Empire. But I disagree. The demons don't see borders. If we don't stop this disaster at the root, then eventually, my home will get wrapped up in the conflict as well. So, you disobeyed orders. You judge me? I was under the impression that you had been cast out from your original order as well. Oh, burn. You and I are nothing alike. Don't be so mean, Victoria. Okay, I guess we have to go home. Oh, I have to look for demons with Victoria and Michael. Okay. Victoria is already waiting for you and Mime when you leave the alchemy shop, and she gives you a curt nod when you approach. Are you two ready? <laughs> I mean, as ready as someone can ever be going on a demon hunt. How are we going to find them? So far we've just stumbled upon them in town. About that. Normally we'd ask around. Demons have a habit of leaving of leaving a trail. But given how anxious the townsfolk are, we better start with simply patrolling the area. If a demon is nearby, either you or I should be able to pick up on it. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Well, let's go on patrol duty then. <laughs> mind if I tag along? I would never mind, Michael. Michael comes out of the shop wearing his usual lazy grin, and Victoria glares at him suspiciously. Michael, I swear. Just what are you planning? <laughs> Nothing too nefarious, I can assure you. I thought I might lend a hand and state my curiosity as to how a former demon huntress works. Oh, and state, not state. You could call it a personal interest for self-preservation. <sighs> if I tell you no, then you're just going to follow us around anyway, correct? Sure thing. You know me so well. Fine. Fine, stick around where I can see you. Yay! I see. Nothing out of the ordinary here. <sighs> Nothing here either. <laughs> no demons in your shop, Quinn. <sighs> Everything is normal. Ugh. So... Perhaps we should take a break? <sighs> so tired. I can't believe this. Seems our earlier run-in with Ronin has made the remaining demons cautious. 
They won't just mindlessly attack like before. Leaving us without any leads. Really? You think Ronan and the demons might be working together? That sounds really dangerous. Look. I never experienced demons working together. They're vengeful creatures, only out to fulfill their own sick desires. Oh, really? Shows just how much you know about spirits, then. <sighs> Explain yourself, mage. Look. Demon is just a term we in the Empire use to describe a spirit that has lost its way and become distorted. There are, however, many types of spirits in the world. Many who work alone, but some who don't. I wonder... Please continue. Thank you. No problem. You see, spirits can generally be divided into four different types. First, we have our common nature spirits. They vary in size, but are usually connected to things like old trees or larger bodies of water. Then there is the Fae, simple creatures, quite reclusive, since the Empire once hunted them almost to extinction. Mirages are quite interesting. That is how you say that, right? They are beings created by powerful emotions. They are rarely powerful and don't possess much agency or will, or will, but the more stubborn ones have a tendency to latch on to the place of their birth. Like an echo lingering in places of great happiness or sadness. And finally, we have ghosts. The spirits of mortals persist in this world for various reasons. Given the numbers and the style of our interactions with them so far, I would guess the demons we're encountering at the moment used to be ghosts. I can't believe this. That's absurd. We'd know if a group of humans had been trapped underground like this. Look. I never said it had to be human ghosts. Are you sure? Creepy. <sighs> this is ridiculous. Such fairy tales will not help our situation. Mm -hmm. Do with the information what you will. My point was simply that if my theory is correct and these demon spirits are connected, if they died together, say an army or a family, well then, there's a good reason to believe that they're working together towards a common goal. So that's how it is. And what goal would that be? <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> you are the worst. <laughs> that's why I love him. Let's not fight. <laughs> Let's refrain from murdering each other just a little longer. <laughs> If you want information about obscure old legends and the occult, I've got just the guy in mind. I find that highly suspicious. But do you have much of an option? Hmm. Away we go! The tavern is fairly empty, so early in the day. I swear, Michael, if you brought us here to get drunk, I will... What is this, Michael? Back for another story? This guy, I think he's the one. I think he... I can kind of hear it in his voice now. He was the bard in the very first video of this Let's Play. I think he's Chris Hackney, which is my beloved, my favorite character in Fire Emblem Three Houses, Dimitri. A strange man walks up to your group, his thick round glasses gleaming in the candlelight as he stares pointedly at Michael. He seems familiar to you. I might be. We're in a bit of a predicament, and I believe you have just the hints we need to move forward. Ah, ah, ah. You know the rules. No spoilers. You're that bard. Oh, I remember you. You're the bard who was telling stories to the kids in the town square. Ah, yes. I remember you seem to be quite enthralled yourself. Oh, I could hear Dimitri in him. I can. Ah! I love Dimitri so much, guys. <laughs> I appreciate an attentive audience. <laughs> I believe we have not yet been introduced. My apologies. You may call me Rune. Rune. Got it. I am a bard who lives to tell stories and tells stories to make a living. The Guild of Bards is an ancient group of performers and storytellers. They guard over many of this world's greatest secrets. Getting them to tell those secrets is the tricky part. <laughs> Every story can be told. For a price. You don't happen to have any stories about this area? <laughs> of Anamone Valley? Bruh! It's Anamone? I've been saying an enemy this whole time! Bro! Anamone! You're right! 
That's, that does not say an enemy. Bruh! That's embarrassing. Bruh! Ah, uh, well, okay. I just can't read. I was glancing over it the whole time. Anemone. Yeah, that. Now I'm now that I'm like actually taking a moment to look at that word. That is not. That is not an enemy. It's the first time anyone's actually said it. God dang it. Oh, quite a few actually, but from the way you ask, I suspect you are referring to something a little more specific. Demons. Rune raises a brow, glancing Michael's way. I see. Are you able to help us? I think I know what you're looking for. But are you willing to pay? Yeah, sure. We'll pay you. Just name your price. <laughs> Committing to the purchase without hearing the price. <laughs> are you sure you work in a store? You're an alchemist, right? What about a uh, potion in return for a story? <laughs> I used to know this alchemist in another city who made a glasses polishing remedy that would last all day. No smudges, just clear eyesight. <sighs> I am all out and won't be going back for quite a while. Bring me something like that and I'll share my knowledge. The bard leaves, and Victoria sighs, crossing her arms over her chest. I can't believe this. Guess we'll have to drop by Elizabeth for this. Oh, troublesome. Mm -hmm. Huh? You're complying with his request without objections? I've seen you shake down far less eccentric personalities for information. How come? About that. I'm kind of curious as well. I was sure you were going to draw your sword on I him. don't handle every interaction with violence. Just most. Actually, you do. Maybe not every interaction, but... <laughs> well, maybe not every interaction, but you're close to a pretty good 50-50 average, I'd say. Victoria glares at you darkly. About that. I'm not so foolish as to antagonize the Guild of Bards. How curious. Huh. I didn't take you for the superstitious type. So... It has nothing to do with being superstitious. It is a well-known fact that you play by the rules of those protected by the patron of the arts, or you face the consequences. That seems odd. I'm so confused. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> the patron of storytellers. The Nightingale, an old god who's known to be rather mischievous towards those who wrong his charges. <sighs> Once a farmer in my home village refused to let a traveling bard seek shelter for the night in his barn. A week later, his fields flooded, the barn burned, and the road he used to reach the village was mysteriously overtaken by dandelions. The accidents only stopped after he went and made the proper sacrifices, asking forgiveness for his wrongdoing. Oh no. That sounds really bad, yes. Let's not risk that. <sighs> Indeed. Well, isn't this neat? Well, I for one find it very encouraging that even a knight of the Empire respects the wrath of the old gods. It makes you seem like it makes you seem less of a military drone and more like an actual person. Michael, I swear. Oh, saw it off. Let's move on. Guess you're off to make a potion. I didn't think you'd be superstitious, Victoria. That's rather disappointing. If you're talking about the fact that I trust Rune because he's a bard, that has nothing to do with superstition. Just common sense. <laughs> It's not common sense to trust the words of a complete stranger. You trusted me, didn't you? Well, that's different. You're a knight. And I trust Rune because he's a bard. It's that simple. Okay. I'm gonna visit Elizabeth first. She'll probably tell me how to get stuff for the potion. Welcome back. I need to clean some glasses. So... So I've got an odd request. A cleaning potion that keeps a pair of glasses clean all day. Oh, curious. That is indeed an odd request. I thought you were hunting demons. So did I. We'll get there. It's all part of my master plan. <laughs> this is all part of my big plan of having superior eyesight when we face d down the demons. Leatherous mercy. I take it you're running an errand for someone. All right through me, huh? 
with such a specific request, though. This is most curious. Huh? Why is that curious? Can it really be? Because I actually know of just such a remedy. Such a remedy. One of my friends long ago wore spectacles, and I spent weeks perfecting a potion so she could... Well, that's not important. It just strikes me as incredibly lucky that your patron asked for this one specifically. I can show you how to make it easily, however, are we ever gonna fix that window? Like, can we at least, like, board it up? Anyone could just walk right in! Hmm? We need some special ingredients? Yes. Right. You should be able to get what we need from Quinn. Do say hi to them for me. Okay. I'll be off then. That's all for now. I'll see you Very later. Very well. Take care, Take dear. I've noticed you staring out the window sometimes. You should be more careful other people don't see you. Oh, right. Of course. I'll be careful. Uh, what were you even doing there? You were just staring out at the streets? I never got the chance to properly explore this place. This is my first time experiencing a surface town, and I'm itching to explore it. You're also new to this place, aren't you? Don't you feel the urge to go look around? No. That was a... decisive answer. Why should I waste my time? There's nothing of interest to me here. And I'll be leaving soon. <laughs> There's always something to be learned from any new place you go to. Walking amongst the townsfolk might give you a new perspective of them. No. It won't. I wonder what happened to you, Anne. Yeah, what was that about there, Anne? Okay, I'm gonna stop by Quinn's. What can I do for you today? Well, first I'm going to ask about the forest. So... So about the wilted forest. Anne has already filled me in on the failed ritual. It's quite unfortunate, but explains the results I got from the soil earlier. The life of the forest was simply sucked out, and the earth was left barren. I'm afraid nothing will grow there for many years to come. I can't believe this. That can't possibly be the end of it. There must be some way we can fix Actually, it. Actually... It might be possible to use nature magic to return life to the soil. I've never actually tackled such a large-scale project before. It's quite a bit out of my jurisdiction, so to say. I believe in you. That's great. If there's anyone who can do it, it's you, Quinn. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I appreciate your confidence in me. All right, I'll give it a go. What's the harm in trying? Right. I could use your help, though. There are some alchemical potions I'm familiar with from back at college that might speed up the process. Sure. I'll do it. I can help out. What do you Thank need? Thank you. Okay, so what do we need? I suppose for the base of the spell, I could really use a strong fertilizer. Do you think you could brew some for me? Sure. Okay. Sure. I'll see what I can whip up back at the shop. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Just swing by whenever you have the potion, then I'll get started. So... Elizabeth sent me for more supplies again. We're making another potion. What do you need? Let me see what she needs. Quinn looks through the list and frowns. <laughs> Let me guess, I need to go somewhere else for something. I'm getting some interesting orders from you lately. I have some of this, but I'm afraid I just sold my last lilies right before you came in. I feel like there's someone somewhere watching us and getting a good laugh out of this. <laughs> That's crazy, though. It's not like anyone could have predicted that all of this would happen, right? Anyway, can you tell us who bought the flowers, Quinn? It was a young boy who came by to purchase them. Was it Kim? Light hair, red eyes, a general look of lost puppy. Yes, it was. Really? That sounds just like Kim, doesn't it? Where did he go? Oh, so that's how it is. I saw him heading out of town and into the forest. Let's go! We might be able to catch him if we're quick. Right. That's great. Right, let's go Take find him. Take care. Take care, you two. You know, when I first saw you, you seemed rather intimidating. 
Almost like a taller Victoria. Oh, really? That's quite a compliment. Victoria is a formidable warrior. Yeah, well, I realized quickly that you're nothing like her. You seem tough on the outside, but one can't scratch the surface much before realizing you're quite soft. I'm... soft? <laughs> like a big, glowing jellyfish. <sighs> She's right, though. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and end that one here. It was interesting, we got to learn a lot about Caden today, and a lot about Anne today. There's a lot of Caden moments, you know, we got to learn about his lie. I'm not even mad about his lie. And he saved us, and we learned about how, like, Nightwalkers, and his ability to, like, conceal his glowingness. And, and we, we learned about her family, but it seems like th there's still even more. Like, that conversation Anne and Caden had shortly, a little bit ago, where she was like, no, there's nothing worth me, like, exploring the town for. Like, like there, there was something there. So I'll be curious to learn more about that. So next time, we're gonna get ingredients for this potion for the bard, and also talk to Victoria. Um, and then I don't know if, like, one will open up to talk to Michael. And that bard, I... Rune, that's his name. I was wondering when he was gonna come up again. Cause I was like, I was kind of thinking, I was like, hmm, we haven't seen him in a while. There he is. Oh, hold up, before I finish, I realized that there's more stuff about the characters and I wanna read it. So we already read that. You started your work as Anne's guinea pig and she's very dedicated. She fears the world outside who isn't kind to mages and will literally do anything to get her professor title. Even if the knowledge she finds might be used to hurt people. Um, okay, she was born to a noble family, who would have guessed? The title isn't of any use to you right now, as she put that life behind her when she joined the Mage Academy, and she doesn't seem to miss it. Okay, so Caden, Caden lied to you. He was never sent by his people to fix things. Instead, he was acting on his own, and his actions were what led to the destruction of the Ivy Woods. He explained to you that he did what he did because he was frustrated with the apathy of his elders who wanted to do nothing even though they knew the mines were destructive. Okay, that's all for him. Michael? Go back to start. Okay. You learned that Michael can't whistle. Also, it is very difficult to learn anything of substance about Michael. And that is what I find so interesting about him. Like, that is all we have on Michael so far. It's just these two. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, no nothing new about mime. Victoria and her boss, wait, okay, yeah. Victoria and her, wait, you just have discovered Victoria used to be a demon hunter before she was became a knight. She doesn't appear to want to talk about it. Victoria and her boss, Alethea, disagree on the methods to deal with the demons. Alethea demands the problem be solved by any means necessary, while Victoria wants to stick to protocol. Okay, interesting. I didn't realize that would update, that's cool. Even more lore, yay. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!